Hey, what's up, guys? It's Larry, the robot maker, robot general. And today we're going to talk about FUBOTS or FUBOTS, uh, the new CRM that I launched. So, do you see my screen right now? Uh, I do now, yes. Okay, so you see like uh, the actual dashboard, right? Yeah, it says okay. FUBOTS and then campaigns, users, lead. Yes. Um, yes, yes. So, uh, before you start asking questions, I kind of want to introduce what this is. When you log into FUBOTS or FUBOTS, uh, the first thing they show you is going to be your lead. So it's this That's is the a, first part. I instead I like the FUBOTS better instead of FUBOTS. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like, but well, FUBOTS sounds like kung fu. You know what I'm saying? So I, you know, I, I, I like kung fu too, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, so as you can see, uh, it, it shows your leads in the pipeline view. Uh, it's very similar to PipeDrive, and PipeDrive is actually one of my favorite CRMs. I used it very extensively. In fact, I used it to build my coaching group, uh, Robot Generals, uh, you know, all the because I got like tons of interest, and then I had to organize it. So I'm huge on PipeDrive, and I still use it to this day. But the fact that this provides it, I might actually consider just migrating everything to this CRM. Uh, okay. But I built out the campaigns and such myself, okay? Uh, and, you know, of course, the platform itself is amazing, but the value that I plan to add to all my clients is the curated and self-generated, self-originated campaigns that I will create and collect. Uh, but, you know, I'm not afraid to say that there are some cam campaigns that are borrowed uh, in a form that, you know, were shareable. So... Uh, and I'll go through those as well today, okay? Um, so again, the first thing you see is like the pipe drive view and you can drag and drop how you see fit. Uh, and you can actually name these, whatever you want. You can add, subtract uh, columns or categories or statuses, uh, which is again, it's very similar to pipe drive. But you can also have a regular view, which is, you know, like it shows you all the prospects in one, uh, one page. And it tells you like, you know, their status and of course when it was created and such, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and you can delete your leads. Now I do want to introduce before I get too deep that this CRM is designed for follow-up purposes in the organization of trying to convert leads, okay? So let me show you like my status. It's very simple, okay? It shows it like a messenger type platform, which is why I love it, right? I mean, it's easy to follow. I can, I can go and, and jump through conversations here, just like Messenger, but you see right here, I can make it an email or a text, whatever I sent out, okay? Right. And, and it keeps a record just like Messenger, so I can go back to see what was said, right? And you can see that these were the ones that were scheduled, right? And I'm actually, I actually uh, did not respond on purpose because I wanted to show in a demonstration uh, what the robots do when you uh, get a lead to opt in. So my phone is getting these text messages every single day because I built it that way. And I purposely did not respond because the way FooBots is designed, if you respond in any way, uh, any way uh, via text, email, or whatever, it will stop all scheduled automations until you put them on another automation. Okay. okay. Yeah. So So these are all the ones that are posted already and it actually shows you what's scheduled so you know this is the last one so it's already done but if, if i had some that were scheduled uh it would show it scheduled so let me see if i can find one that might be scheduled already uh a lot of these people already responded so maybe not um actually well no i already, you already responded as well so uh you know i, I can show you later on but when you add a lead, it, it will set, show you what was sent and also show you what's scheduled, like what's going to go out later on, right? So it's kind of cool that you kind of have an idea of what's going to happen to that lead uh, as time goes by. But uh, again, I want to show you, where's mine? Here, let me go this real quick. Let me go to me again. And as you can see, it has status right here. And there's only four statuses. It's either new responded, won, or lost. Again, this is only designed for follow-up purposes. You're trying to convert these leads, right? No. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. As you can see, you got new, responded, won, or lost, okay? Right. Now, it's important, these statuses are important because new, uh, of course, lets you know what's going on. Responded means they actually converted or they actually uh, said something, whatever. And won means, you know, of course, you converted them to actually purchase whatever you're selling. 
uh, and lost means you did it. And the interesting thing about this, if you go to your uh, actual uh, campaigns, right, I can look at how well my campaigns are doing. See, I can see how many prospects came in, how many responded, right? Um, it shows me the response rate, right? So I got a 43% response rate on immediately. That means my first initial messages are powerful enough to get them to respond, right? Uh, and right now I have a 0% conversion rate because I don't have anything won. But if I go to a lead, let's say I went ahead and, and, and mark myself. Actually, I'm going to mark my wife here. I'm going to put her as one, okay? So when you go back to the campaigns, and the campaigns is specifically designed for that campaign itself. So basically you get to understand how well that campaign is working, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say you have five campaigns that you built out. You can put those five campaigns on, uh, you know, two different sets of leads and you can see which campaign is performing the best, okay? Right. Um, so as you saw, it, the, the conversion rate went up to 8% because I can put my wife as one, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right now, the the crazy thing is, and this is something that I noticed was kind of uh, odd for me. When I put lost on somebody, the conversion rate didn't change. I'm thinking to myself, well, I lost them, so the conversion rate didn't change. But the way they look at it, if it's lost, that person is no longer part of the campaign. Like you're no longer trying to follow up with them, right? right? So it's not a lost deal. It's just for whatever reason they they just said they they want to they want to. Then that was like a long term drip. Then that's what I would do. Yes, yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, again, you know, that's, that's all based on how aggressive you want to be and how long you want to, uh, stick with them. Now I do want to say before I forget, because it, you asked a good question, campaigns right now only last a hundred days. That means you can only go out a hundred days. Okay. Obviously we want to be able to go at least a year, right? So I believe the developers are trying to get it up to 365 days, but at this point it's a hundred days. Okay? okay. So a lot of my campaigns are built out for only 100 days even though they were intended for a year or something okay um so i wanted to just show you that part real quick uh do you have any questions about like the lead uh dashboard or how you manage leads and such no it's pretty simple yeah that's why i love it right it's a combination of my favorite things pipe drive right uh, it's a combination of line desk because it does the follow-up and it's a combination of messenger because I mean, like seriously, I mean, this is so easy to respond and, and, and coordinate and talk to people. You know what I'm saying? I can add yep. notes. I can add reminders. I can tag people right here. Right. But it's just like messenger, you know? And I mean, obviously messenger is easy to use. That's why Facebook employs it that way. So they just did a good job of emulating the messenger style of communicating. Right. And the fact that you can switch from email to text is really cool as well. So if I want to email someone, I can type it here. It'll send them as an email. Uh, or if I want to send it to their phone as a text, I can click text. It'll send it as a text. Okay. Um, so let's go to the actual campaigns. Okay. Now I'm going to switch accounts real quick. Okay. So let me do that. You see that? Yep. Okay. So I don't have any prospects. I did this on purpose. This is my admin account. I will never put a prospect in there. The other account you saw was like my actual Fubot sales, meaning people that are trying to sign up for Fubots or thinking about Fubots. That Those are the people that I have in there. But I want to show you, this is where I'm building the campaign. Okay. So these are all the different campaigns I've built, obviously, because I'm in the real estate mortgage industry. This is what I'm going to focus most of my energy on, but I am going to grow uh, my verticals or industries and add more campaigns but for now uh, you as a loan officer will probably appreciate these types of campaigns okay yep and I designed it so that there's lenders and agents now I'm not going to give everybody the same campaigns that's why I labeled them okay but uh, for the most part if I believe there's a campaign that will benefit you even if it doesn't completely apply to you I will send it to you so like let, let's say there's like a a FISBO or for sale by owner campaign that's designed for an agent, I might send it to you even though you're a loan officer because maybe you can kind of remix it yourself or maybe you can share it with your agent friends and referral partners, right? Right. Um, but let me kind of show you the meat of one of them real quick. This is the 10 days of pain. This is what uh, Robot Generals, my coaching group, we teach and we preach, right? So uh, this is how it looks when you have it built out, 
okay? And I'm gonna show you how it looks whenever you go and edit and change it, right? So this is an email, you click email and it turns into an, a, you know, an email uh, input. You put a subject, you put the message and you're done, that's it. And you can actually select day, you know, when do you want it uh, from the day you add it uh, to 100 days. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out, because uh, this, this will benefit you, uh, and you know, of course, uh, something you have to consider because you, know, you want to be careful with how you send messages. I put semi as process added because these are going to be leads that come in from another source like a Facebook lead form funnel, right? So right. the moment they opt in, I want them to get sent something. But I do have campaigns where I purposely wait until the next day to send the message because let's say I get, uh, I don't know, uh, 10 leads from somebody, right? And I'm working at 9 p.m., right? I don't want to put all 10 people on a immediate drip of text messages and emails at 9 p.m., right? Because number one, you know, that's kind of not respecting their time. But number two, I don't want to get text messages responding back at midnight. You know what I'm saying? So right. I set it up, and you can change this if you want. I set it up so that once you upload the leads, it won't send anything until the next day, okay? So that's something that I want you to understand how I built these campaigns. I did it for a very intentional reason. Some of them are designed for immediate firing of the uh, follow-up because it would be a response to a lead opting in. And some of them are delayed on purpose because I don't know when you're going to be adding lead, excuse me, leads into your CRM. It could be at midnight. It could be at 2 a.m. in the morning. It could be at 5 p.m., right? Um, but if you are the kind of person that knows exactly what you're doing when it comes to sending out your messages and you want to schedule it so that it sends it immediately, you can always edit it by just going here and just put send it same day and then put, you know, immediately right here. Okay. Okay. So you have three options, email, text, and voicemail. Okay. So email, of course, gives you the opportunity to do whatever. Text messages, that you do it, like just a regular text message and voicemail means you could actually record a message right here on the dashboard, whatever you want to say. Okay. So, uh, and you actually create one yourself and upload it manually. So if you have, you recreate one in another way, maybe you have a uh, voicemails from another software or whatever, uh, you can upload it and they'll actually accept it as the message that you plan to send as uh, the bring this voicemail, okay? Um, so uh, I'm not gonna go through every single campaign, but I will tell you that I have campaigns for, uh, you know, listing, uh, uh, you know, listing prospects, for buyer prospects, uh, people who maybe didn't qualify for credit reasons. I have a credit follow-up. I have expired, I have FISBOs or for sale by owners. I have people who opted in on a lead uh, funnel. I have people who opted in on a website. Uh, I have all sorts of different types, right? And I have, you know, age leads. So let's say you got leads that you, that you got from before and they just never responded. You can throw them, like, right here, see? You can throw them into this. So it's like a long-term drip, right? Uh, so I try to think, you know, if this was my CRM, which it, of course it is, what would I want uh, to be able to employ or, or, or send out to my leads, right? Uh, and what kind of leads do I have? Do I have leads that are fresh? Do I have old leads? Do I have leads that are being given to me as a referral? Whatever, right? Um, and I have some specific special uh, kind of uh, niche uh, campaigns. Uh, for example, uh, like this one right here is a secret LOs campaign, which, you know, you, you, you are a part of, uh, it's designed for me to communicate to agents, not to prospects or people trying to get a mortgage. It's designed for agents. Uh, so that's something that, you know, if I, uh, created that relationship with the agent, then I would put them on this drip. And then of course my robots would do their job. Right. Uh, but those are ones that probably won't be shared with everyone because not everyone is a part of that group and not everyone would even understand what to do with whatever it is I put here, okay? Uh, yeah. But, but yeah, those are the campaigns. Um, do you have any questions about any of those? No, I understand completely. Okay, perfect. So uh, real quickly, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to create a campaign, okay? So um, I'm not even gonna copy and paste from a script that I have, I'm just gonna make it up right in front of you, okay? So I can either copy or clone a campaign that already exists. 
So for example, they, uh, I told you how about uh, I might give you an agent follow-up that's for like Fizbo's or for sale by owners. You might want to remix it to your own. So I would encourage you to get that campaign, copy it, and then go in and edit it and make it so it's tailored to uh, more of a lender perspective or loan officer perspective. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but that way you don't have to sit there and type the whole thing or whatever. You can actually just go in and just change a few words and it'll still fit into your marketing for your specific purposes. Okay. Uh, but for starting from scratch, you just press this. Uh, let's hit, let's call this uh, the JM demo uh, campaign. And I'm going to make it a five drip, meaning I'm going to do five different messages. And the force call, this is an interesting thing. This is designed so that if you get a lead that comes from another source, like a Facebook lead funnel, it will send it to the CRM and the CRM will know to give you a call directly to your phone and it will tell you, you have a new lead. The name is Larry Lee. Press one to call them now and it gives you the option to literally connect with that lead right away. Okay. That's what. That's what the forced call is. A lot yeah. of the campaigns, I did not put a forced call because, again, people might upload 100 leads at once and put them on their campaign. They'll be really bad if you got 100 forced calls. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, um, but that's something that you would consider. What, am, I, am I getting those leads in a way where I want them to uh, have a chance to talk to me right away? Or do I want them to just kind of get automatically dripped by my messengers and text messages and emails and such? So in this case, I'm not going to put a forced call. But that's what the forced call would be. Okay. Uh, yep. So I, I create create and therefore now I have like a blank canvas here. I click add new. Let's say I want to send the first thing I want to send is a release voicemail. So I want it to send it uh, again. I like to delay it. Uh, so if I added the lead like, you know, at four o'clock in the morning, uh, I want them to get it at eight o'clock the next day. Right. And I can just start recording. Hey, what's up guy? This is Larry the robot maker, robot general, just wanted to create a demo voicemail. Uh, if you hear this, then uh, I don't know how because I'm never going to launch this drip, but if you do, please let me know so I can see how you hack me. Thanks, bye. <laughs> and that's it, right? And then you might not be able to hear it because, you know, of course, we're using a mic to communicate right now, but you can play it and it will actually demo it. And again, my sound might not be playing it, but this is how you preview it, okay? Uh, so let's say I'm satisfied with that. Press save. So I know now anyone that I add to this campaign is going to get a ringless voicemail with the message you heard a day after at 8 a.m. Okay. So let me go and add a text message. And let's say a day after. And let's, let's, say, let's make it 8.30. So 30 minutes after they got the ringless voicemail, I'm going to say, hey, first name. I just left you a voicemail. Did you get it? If not, let me know. Thanks. And then I'll put my first name, meaning me. And there's my first text message. Okay. Now, let's say I want to send an email as well. Uh, and let's say the email, I want to go ahead and send it uh, the same day maybe the same time I send the voicemail, right? Hey, first name. An email to say hello. I am writing this to let you know that this CRM works and if you're interested in something like this, let me know. And I will put first name. Actually, I'll put full name. My full name. And I will put my phone number. And I'll tell you where you put this information so you know where they're, they're sourcing the tags, right? right? So I'm going to save. So uh, on day one, they're going to get a ringless voicemail and an email at 8 a.m. And then 30 minutes later, they're going to get a text message, right? And then I'm going to add another text message, two days, and I'm going to do it uh, maybe at noon. And I like to kind of spread it out when I create it because I want to see 
when they respond. They might not respond in the morning. Maybe they'll respond more at lunchtime. Maybe they'll respond after work, whatever. So like when I build like a 10-day CRM, uh, not CRM, uh, follow-up, then I might have the first one at 8 a.m., the next one at 11, the next one at 3, the next one at 5, just to see where they respond, right? Because, of, again, my dashboard shows me when they respond and usually what time they respond, right? So I'm going to say, hey, first name. Did you get my last text? Let me know. And I'm going to put my phone number. So there's my second text right there. Right. And, you know, me trying to make this an actual serious campaign that I would actually employ, I would probably send them, uh, I said five touch, but I'm going to go ahead and make it six touch because I'm going to send them an email and a, another text message. So this one is going to be three days. And I'll put this at 5 p.m. so that maybe they'll check it when they get home. Hey, are you ignoring me? <laughs> First name. It's my full name. I'll put it's your boy. <laughs> Yo, call me. My phone. Actually, I'm put signature. And that's 5 p.m., right? So I'm going to make a text message to go along with that. And I'm going to make it three days. And I'm also going to do it at 5 p.m. I just sent you an email like two seconds ago. How come you haven't read it, haven't replied? Call me. And there you have it, six drip campaigns, which I feel like I did it in less than 10 minutes. Yep. Um, and if you already have it written, then it's even easier, right? Uh, you, to check the preferences, you click here. You can select the time zone. I have it so it's only 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., but if you notice, I had some drips starting at 8. It had some drips starting at 5. The problem with that, if you have it, like, let's say at 8, it wouldn't send until 9, okay? okay. So because, you, you know, you want to respect time. And they, they're really smart. They designed so the earliest is 5 a.m., which, of course, is crazy. Who would ever, you know, text at 5 a.m.? But they made it so it's 5 a.m., so I'm going to make it 8 a.m., and the latest is actually going to be 11 p.m. So you can't text someone at 2 o'clock in the morning. Like, my robot funnel won't ten, send a text at 2 a.m. in the morning, even though I get leads at 2 a.m. in the morning. And those people, they're like, who the heck is this? You know? Like, why are you texting me at 2 a.m.? They don't realize it's a robot. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, so I actually stop at 9 p.m., you see? And I can select a pipeline. Where do I want this lead to go to? You know, if I add these leads, which pipeline do I want them in? The first pipeline, the second pipeline, one pipeline might be for ages, one pipeline might be for prospects, one pipeline might be for uh, refis, one pipeline might be for referral partners, whatever, right? Uh, but I can select the pipeline. I only have one built, but I have like several. I can build it real easily, okay? And again, I can do force calls. Do I want to send on weekends or I don't want, or I don't want to bother them Monday through Friday? I can do that as well, okay? And, um, you can name it wherever you want. Uh, I turn it into a six day, uh, six drip, six touch drip is what I like to call it. And I'm going to say it's a three day campaign, right? So it's a three day with this messaging and it has six different drips, right? Uh, and that's why I named my campaigns a certain way because I want people to be able to look at the campaigns and understand what it is. You know, this is a 15 day, 16 touch drip. This is a 10 day, 14 touch strip. This is a 100 day, 58 touch strip. You know what I'm saying? Yep. That's why I did that. Even though it's really clumsy and long, you could rename it wherever you want, but I just want to describe it so that you, as the user, can automatically know, okay, this is one that I probably don't want to mess with right now because it's 58 freaking touches. Maybe I'll do that whenever I have a weekend off, right? But uh, 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 17 drip, I can edit that real quick. Five drip for sure. You know what I'm saying? So that's the rationale behind why I named the campaigns that I did, right? And you can see all the campaigns I built out and you can go to the page and you can see, there, there you go, there's that one, right? Yeah. Now, again, the campaigns, are, the campaigns are not just about the messages, it's about the entire 
uh, success of the campaign, right? So it tells me how many leads I got, how many responded, how many I won, how many I lost, when they replied, right? Uh, it gives me all the analytics so that I know that this campaign is working or not working, right? I mean, let's say you have a, a, a split test. Let's say you have two different campaigns. One is really aggressive or one is not as aggressive. Maybe one goes uh, out every single day and one goes out every week. You can actually compare them and see which one gets a better response. You know what I'm saying? So right. things like that is valuable to me as a marketer. And I would believe that, you know, anyone who is dialed in, and uh, you know has a lot of leads and they, you know they're all about the conversion game right automated conversion game this would be very valuable to them and I didn't even care about this until I saw it I was like holy crap this is awesome I don't know why I haven't had something like this before you know I mean like line this has a conversion thing but it's very complicated I don't understand it um, this one's like pretty much cut and dry uh, so yeah uh, you know uh, you know again I, I want your question but I just want to say one last thing before I, I uh, you know I finish my presentation um, this is literally pipe drive, lion desk, and agent legend combined. Okay, I don't know if you ever use agent legend. Agent legend is very easy. It's very easy to edit and 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 add voice and such. But I believe this is actually easier. Uh, but it has the ringless voice mode, which is cool. But it's like two hundred bucks or three hundred bucks a month. Okay, it's crazy. And the max leads you can upload is fifty, which makes no sense to someone like me who has thousands of leads okay i would spend more time uploading than i would actually dripping on them you know what i'm saying i would have to pay two or three months with the subscriptions before i can get my lease to even get started right uh so uh, not to talk trash about them i'm just giving you the facts right uh again i like it i think it's like pipe drive because you know again you can have a pipe drive view uh you know whenever well, i don't have any leads right now but you can see the pipe drive view right uh, and you can drag and drop, which is really cool. I don't know how many pipelines you can have, but from what I was told, there's no limit. Um, and, you know, of course, you can kind of see, you know, the prospects here. But, I mean, it's so simple. I mean, a lot of, like, line desk is a good example. Uh, so that's how, so it's a combination of pipe drive, agent legend, and line desk. Line desk is very, very detailed. It's very robust. And it's almost like an overkill of information, Right. Um, I just want to know what leads I have that have responded, have not responded, so I know who to call, who, who to text, and whatever. That's all I need, right? Uh, and of course, you know, Line Desk has more than just a follow up as their one of their features. But um, at this point, when I'm trying to get a lead to respond to me, I don't care about anything except for the fact that their their number's good, their email's good, and they're responding, and that's it. You know. Um, but you know, of course, I have a different mindset than everybody, so uh, I'm, I might not be the right fit. But that's the reason why. I like the CRM because it matches my personality and my way of marketing. Uh, and I think it's built for people who just don't have time to call every single lead, uh, but want ease when it comes to developing campaigns for them to uh, at least try to convert their leads that are just sitting there collecting dust. Right. Uh, so yeah, uh, hopefully that makes a lot of sense. Do you have any questions? Yeah. So um, going back to you, so infinite amount of leads you can upload. Say that again. How many leads can you upload? Uh, I've never tried to max it out, right? Uh, but I was, I mean, I was informed that, you know, there's, there's no limit. I mean, I, I have clients who uploaded like 1,500. Okay. It takes time to personalize all the emails and the signatures and such. I mean, like these are very simple campaigns, right? Uh, right. So, so in my campaign, I would add a link to my uh, my videos, I would add a link to my chat bots. I would add a link to my 1003 pre-app 1003 link. Uh, but I don't put those in the campaigns because again, not everyone has those assets. So I try to make it as bare bones as possible and you can customize however you want. But for me to build up my follow-up, I would probably have to spend uh, another couple of weeks just for my own marketing. So um, that's an excuse, but that's what I'm, I'm going to stick with. <laughs> so who, who would set up the campaigns for me and who would set up like, you know, that signature thing, the first name, last name, all that stuff. So uh, when you sign up, there's a form that you would fill out, right? And the form, uh, it's a Google form. It's very simple. Uh, but the form itself, uh, and let me go ahead and open it up so you can see what I'm talking about here. So this is the form. It's very simple. Um, ask first name, last name, email, address, phone number, preferred area code, and your text signature. Because, again, this is a very simple CRM. And it's designed to get the maximum uh, contact rate 
uh, anything that's HTML or image based can actually get flagged and get put into the uh, spam box, right? We try not to do that, right? I'm not saying that it's spam proof, but it can happen. But the less of the extras that you add to an email, the less likely it's going to be marked as spam. So that's why we use a text signature. <coughs> Okay. So the text email or the, when the text somebody, it's not going to come from my phone number, it come from some ghost number or whatever, but I would be able to, it would come then to my text messaging on my phone and I'd be able to respond to them from that or would I have to log in the system to respond? If they respond to the text message, you actually get an email alert about it, right? It doesn't, it doesn't go to your phone, okay? Uh, but you can text from the CRM and it goes into their, their text, you know, like whatever, like their uh, phone number. Okay. And then just go in conversation mode. You were showing me that message mode. Yes. Yes. That's, and, and that's how I actually would recommend doing most of your communication. But obviously sometimes you're on the fly. You can't do that. Right. But you can log on to, uh, to the FUBOT CRM and it looks exactly the same on your phone as it does uh, if you were to use it on the computer. Uh, how many emails, text messages, and ringless voicemails can I send per month? Uh, that, that's a tricky question. Okay. Because, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it so that you don't have to pay for it, right? You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to do anything. That's what I'm trying to do, okay? I want to make it so it's as simple as possible. But, yes, there is a possibility that you will max out, uh, you know, like the uh, what we would call the statistically average amount of text message emails and voice re uh, email, uh, voice list, uh, actually, no, ringless voicemail. Um, so, yeah, at this point, I don't have a cap or anything like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, I have discussed it with people who are also, you know, involved in the CRM and they, they're coming up with numbers and such, you know, we're looking at, you know, maybe anywhere between like a thousand text messages a month, maybe like a hundred voicemail drops and about 1500, a thousand to 1500, uh, call minutes. Right. Uh, so I don't know how, how much, I mean, uh, oh, there's also an auto dialer. So let me show you this. I'm glad that we talked about this. You can actually auto dial people, right? So let me see here. You can call, right? So you can change the filter. So let's say I want to talk to only agents. I only want to talk to refi people, right? You can actually, uh, you know, tag, select the tag or select the campaign. I only want to talk to people on this campaign or that campaign, right? And you actually put them on a call. So you put right here and actually sets it up so that you can start dialing them. Oh, I better stop. It's probably just price. Yeah, it's price. It started calling them right away. <laughs> but yeah, you can put them on a dollar and actually start dialing them. Okay. Um, so I haven't employed this, so I don't know all the ins and outs of it. But I, I definitely believe. Let me hang this up. I, she probably, she's probably like, why is my phone ringing? I definitely oh. believe what would happen is they would pick up and they would ring your phone and you'd be able to connect with them. Uh, so I'm telling you that because if you want to use this as a dollar, which you can. Uh, there, there will be a limit that you may reach, and then we would have to discuss that. But at this point, because we're on beta stages, I'm still trying to test everything out. And yeah, if I were using it as a dialer, but definitely the you know, ringless voicemail, text, and emails would be great to have a you know, unlimited amount or you know, at least an, a, a huge enough amount. Because, like you were saying, there's that other one, I think it was Pipe Drive, whatever you said, it only does only like 50 ringless voicemails a month or something like that, or, you know, text well, or whatever. Well, what it was, what it was, oh, see, look, she just told me she got a phone call from me. <laughs> Sorry, I was demonstrating. Uh, we'll talk later about it. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I completely understand. Uh, you know, but there will be people who want it for the dialer, right? Uh, so just just wanted to I guess uh, let you know the limits. You know, it, it, 15, yeah. it'd be like ten, uh, it'd be like a thousand to fifteen hundred minutes. Uh, so, I mean, of course, if you're on the phone that much, uh, you know, trying to convert people, then obviously you're, uh, you're heavily, uh, ex uh, exploring the power of the CRM and hopefully you're doing better. And then I could be like, well, you know what, uh, you know, I might have to kind of bump you because you're using more than the, the allowed amount or maximum amount or whatever, but I'm trying not to cap it. That's basically what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to make it so that you don't have to worry about that. But, you know, there, there's always the opportunity of that happening. And if we have to, we can always do like a, what do you call it? Like a, you know, a bill bill per, per month, which I don't want to do because I, I plan to have hundreds of thousands of people uh, using this. And I wouldn't want to try to bill a thousand people, you know. <laughs> I'd rather them just pay a subscription and we're done, you know. 
Um, and I'm trying to keep it as low as possible, which is why, uh, you know, uh, I, there has to be some sort of, you know, a reasonable limit, right? Uh, but of course, you know, it was available, like, you know, your 10 days of pain, would that be available or, you know, any of the other things too? They're just kind of plug and play. I get, I, I'm giving you all, all my campaigns. Yes. Uh, well, uh, let's put it this way. Agents will get agent campaigns, loan officers will get loan officer campaigns. Uh, and then of course, like people who are like in specific coaching groups and such, they'll get different campaigns as well. Uh, but you know, I'm probably going to give all loan officer can I mean, all agent campaigns to loan officers because I believe that you can benefit from having that. So you can edit it yourself and then, uh, you know, maybe even share it with your referral partners. I'm not going to give agents the loan officer campaigns because the loan officer campaigns are very heavy on like mortgage conversation and verbiage. Right. And it just wouldn't make sense. Like they, they wouldn't be able to do it legally. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, so that's the reason why I'm making that decision. But if I have an agent that says, Hey, Larry, I want all the campaigns. I don't care what it is. I'll probably share it with them. So we'll have to see, but that's the mindset I have right now is that agents are going to have agent campaigns and loan officers are going to get loan officer campaigns and possibly some agent campaigns as well. So the cost is how much now? Uh, right now for the beta is $39 a month. And what happens with those non-beta? Non-beta, I'll probably go up to like 60, 70, 80 bucks a month. I don't, I don't know. I'm still kind of playing around with those numbers. Uh, you know, again, this is kind of helping me figure out, you know, what, what I need to price it at, right? If I, if I join your beta, am I locked into that price then? Or once you stop doing the beta, then it can go up? So if you, if you join beta when it's available, then no, that, that'll be your pricing forever. Right. Okay. I mean, the only reason I would change is if, if, if like the people that are helping that are providing this for me, I was like, Hey, you know, we're going to triple the, the cost and I might have to be like, well, now I got to off, off set it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I would never, I would never like increase prices arbitrarily just, just to do it. You know what I'm saying? It, it would have to be like, a, I'm sorry, what? Your contract? No, no contracts. No, absolutely no contract. I never do contracts because I don't want customers that are not happy. Right. Uh, so you're you're probably talking a thousand text messages a month, 1500 emails. And how many regular voicemails again? Actually emails, emails will probably be uh, pretty much unlimited because they're, they're, they're fairly cheap. Right. Yeah. So emails, you probably won't, you probably won't be paying for emails or, uh, you know, I mean, unless you're sending like a million emails a day or something, you know? Um, so, so emails, don't worry about that. Uh, text messages is about a thousand, maybe higher, right. A month. Uh, voicemail drops is a hundred ish a month and phone calls are going to be based on minutes and that's going to be about a thousand to 1500 minutes. Right. I probably wouldn't do the phone calls, but so everything else, so the emails, the text messages, the voicemail drops for those numbers you just said is 39 bucks a month. There's no additional charges or anything. No, 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 no. Again, only if you like go crazy, right? Let's say right. you, you yeah. send 10,000 text messages, then I might be like, Hey, we have to figure something out, you know, because I'm actually right. losing money with you, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, but no, that, that's going to be, that's, and again, it's beta stage and beta is almost like uh, my way of saying, Hey, anything can happen. You know, you know, uh, I might take this away. I might add this or whatever, you know, that's why it's a beta. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, that, that is actually the intention. You gotta understand one of the things I'm trying to do is I'm trying to, uh, you know, of course make everyone happy who becomes a part of this. So that's why increasing prices would be a bad thing. Cause I'll probably lose clients because of that. So I'm trying my best to make sure I set it up so that we can all win and no one gets hurt, right? Um, so at this point, uh, the beta is you kind of joining to kind of help me because I might ask for feedback, whatever, and I might ask for some favors, like, hey, can you give me a review or something, right? Um, but that's what that's why it's beta right now. Plus, I'm trying to, you know, of course, learn myself. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of done on the back end. I'm actually trying to figure out, okay, I should change this. I should add this. Maybe I should add more campaigns, whatever, you know, Oh, people are, are saying that, you know, this is lagging, whatever. So uh, it's giving me a chance to kind of uh, develop it. Right. And then eventually right. when I believe it's solid, then it's not going to be, it's no longer going to be beta. It's going to be, uh, you know, normal, I would say. Uh, but I'm definitely going to make it so that uh, again, no matter who signs up, when they sign up, it's going to be a win for everybody. All right. Send me a sign up sheet. All right, perfect, man. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and send it to you. Uh, actually, I'm going to send it to you right now because I'm going to send it to you, Messenger. Now, do you have any other questions? Uh, you know, obviously, and you know me, uh, I'm, I'm around, you know, so it's not like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you to sign up and then you'll never be able to reach me ever again, you know? Right. 
Um, so do you have any questions right now before we, no, uh, not right now. Mm -hmm. perfect. I really appreciate it boss. Uh, and again, I want you to know that this is recorded. I'm going to use this uh, for future training purposes and uh, as well as to kind of answer people's questions. Um, obviously, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, work with you. And uh, of course, if you have any questions, just give me a call, all right? Definitely. Thank you very much, Larry. I appreciate you, Josh. You have a good day. You too. Thanks. And uh, just again, wanted to, of course, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, I'm going to do a lot of these videos and I'm going to make sort of a collection or a collage or edit version so that I can pretty much cover as many bases as possible so that, you know, with you watching this video and other videos in the future, you can have pretty much a strong perspective or strong bird's eye view as to what uh, FUBOTS and FUBOTS are about. Okay. Again, this would be a big question. Give me a call, text me, email me, where you like this. Larry, the robot maker, robot general. I'm out. That mic. You have to watch the demo video that I sent you where I did uh, this with another yeah. customer. Okay, perfect. So uh, I'm assuming that Mary Lee's gonna be a little bit more advanced than the, the first video that you guys might have watched. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, open up my CRM. So uh, I, I'm, I'm not even gonna say anything. I just wanna know what questions you have and I'm gonna do my best to answer it for you. Um, but yes, this is, this is a demo. Oh, okay, honestly, that's not true. This is the CRM that I'm using for all my potential CRM clients. So basically, this is the CRM for the CRM, okay? Uh, so it's not gonna be exactly the same. When I, say, when I say exactly the same, it's not gonna be the same as the one that you guys are gonna have. Now, if you're asking about campaigns and such, then I would have to log into another account where I have the campaigns, which is fine. Uh, you know, either way is cool. Uh, but I just wanna kinda give you that uh, notion so that you know um, you know, where I'm navigating and what I'm working with. But this is basically all the leads that have opted in based on the CRM. So these people are people who are wanting to uh, sign up for FooBots, right? Uh, so, uh, okay, so you have, uh, what question do you have uh, uh, on, on the get? Well, I guess my first question is, is like, um, I think the purpose of what I want to use this for is my leads that are coming in from another source. Yes. I want to be able to figure out how to put them in here. Okay. And do then you, start on the campaign. Do you use, uh, 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 so you want to you import uh, uh, like a, a database or do you want to connect it to like a lead generation source? Well, right now I have a lead generation source and mm -hmm. I think that any new leads that come in, I want to be able to set up, you know, a robot to be able to automatically come in here and be put into my CRM. Okay. So, uh, you know, obviously there's uh, plenty of those different types of systems, uh, you know, and, and I'm not going to know all of them, obviously, uh, but, you know, uh, depending on which one you're using, I could uh, do my best to uh, show you what I would do to try to figure it out. So, uh, which Okay, well, I'm, I do, I mean, to start off with, um, right now I get a lot of leads every day, uh, or not a lot, but... A good number from Boomtown. Boomtown. Okay. So this is what you do first. Okay. So uh, I, are you able to see my screen? Like, are you, you're, you said you're on the phone or you're on a computer? No, I'm on the computer, but okay. I'm using the audio from my phone. Okay, perfect. So you can see my screen pretty well, right? You can see all the, the text and everything. I, I see it all. Okay, perfect. So let me go ahead and minimize this real quick. Now, you see on the bottom right, right here, the little, uh, whatever, uh, conversation bubble? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna click that, right? This is, and, and just so you guys know, I didn't build this CRM. This is a CRM that's developed by people way smarter than me, who have a lot more time than I do, okay? And I, I'm, I'm a white label, a client of theirs, but I built out, like, the, the system that kind of uh, works with it and I built out the, the campaigns for it, okay? So uh, these people don't work for me, okay? They're support for me as a client, but also for everyone who signs up, okay? So this Genesis person, I do not know who this person is, but obviously they are assigned to answer questions, you know, using this uh, communication platform that this CRM has provided, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to type Zapier because that is my assumption where most of our integrations will happen. What I mean by that is if you have a Facebook, if you have a, 
uh, like I said, you know, like boom time is a good example uh, I use click funnels right Zapier is going to be the bridge or the uh, you know the connection between the two okay so I'm gonna put Zapier right here and I I'm gonna show you uh, but I also want you to remember that if you need to you have uh, this is what you do to get started to do anything with Zapier okay and uh, it's it's a it's a uh, still a beta stage platform so if you were to log into Zapier directly and try to find the connection for the CRM you won't find it okay you must go through this because there's like a, a permission or a uh, like a token or something like that. you have to click and then they actually uh, cookie or pixel your browser to be able to use the platform okay so and I'm gonna show you what I mean uh, and I'm gonna explain to you as I'm doing okay so I'm gonna go ahead and click the button here to search Zapier sometimes you don't even have to talk to the person you actually just do right here right uh, let me go ahead and say apologize to him hey I meant to search myself things that's kind of cool that's like a live chat though but this is what I meant to do I meant to go to search for articles you go to Zapier and you see they're setting up Zapier, how to get leads in the system overview. I just click the setting up Zapier and it actually gives you a full on explanation on what to do. Okay. Now, again, I'm not going to tell you, okay, well, there you go. That's your answer. No, I'm going to actually do it for you, but I just want to show you the uh, resources that you have at your disposal. Okay. Uh, so, I'm going to go to the top again. This is the link that you have to click. It says to get access to our Zapier app, click this link. So I'm going to click it. You're going to have Zapier open up. Hopefully you're logged into your Zapier, right? And it says you have been invited to use Prospect Connector on Zapier. And, you know, Prospect Connector, they kind of describe it. And you go accept invite and build the Zap, right? So you click here. And now your browser is cookied so that you can use Prospect Connector, whatever it's called, okay? So. Right. Um, so now I'm in Zapier because I, I was already logged in, right? I'm going to go ahead and make a Zap. And I know you're a little familiar with Zapier a little bit, right? Right, Boss Lady? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm already using it to take those leads and put it into my um, Django CRM. Okay. okay, perfect. You're going to see a very similar system, but probably a lot easier than Django. Okay, right. so uh, is, you know how you choose an app? We're choosing Boomtown, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna click Boomtown. I happen to have a Boomtown account as well. Uh, you know, I got referral partners and such. You know, who, who uh, provide me access to that, and I want to uh, create a new lead, right? So when a new lead comes in from Boomtown, I want that to be the trigger. I want the new lead goes to Boomtown. I want that to go to my new CRM, right? So yeah. I'm clicking new lead, save and continue. There's my account right there. I'm going to test to make sure it's good. It works. Save and continue. Uh, let me go ahead and get some leads. Hopefully, I have more than just one. If not, that's okay. Hopefully, there's not like a fake lead here. Yeah, I'm going to just use the fake lead, right? Right. And again, I don't know why. I mean, trust me, I have leads. <laughs> I don't know why they're not populating. Uh, but I'm going just. It, it did it. It did it for me too. I mean, when I did my other one, I mean, it just pulled in a fake lead, which was kind of cool because then I could test it out when it came. It got pulled in. I knew exactly which one it was. Yes, yes, and that that's true. That's true. Uh, you can literally uh, experiment and everything, and you're not you're not annoying someone, right? Um, but you know, I just I just wanted you know to kind of show you like in real time what I would be doing if I was in this scenario, right? But uh, we're gonna go ahead and just use the, the fake lead for now. So I'm going to cancel the search. I'm going to continue. And a lot of people, if you don't use Zapier very much, you have to do that step. You have to populate the lead. It's almost like loading the gun, right? If you don't load the gun, the rest of the integration won't, won't work. It needs to have the bullet to go from one part, the trigger, into the action, right? The bullet has to go somewhere. So, but I mean, it, there has to be something that goes from the trigger to the, the action, right? Or the results. So I'm gonna add the step. Okay, so remember, Prospect co uh, uh, Connector is the name of the app, right? So you only have two of them. You see this by invite. So we're only able to access it by clicking the, the path that I showed you, okay? Um, now, 
when I first started doing this, they told me to use the 1.0.0, but uh, I was doing some integrations and it was uh, like uh, glitching on me. So I went ahead and, you know, just used, used my intuition and just selected the 1.1.0 and it actually worked. <clears throat> so uh, I can't explain it, right? Because, uh, you know, again, there's smarter people someplace else that's working on all this. Uh, but I would suggest using 1.0.0 first and doing everything, and if it's glitching, then go ahead and switch it to 1.1.0, which is basically go from the first choice to the second choice, okay? So in this demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and select the first one, okay? So uh, new prospect, that's what we're getting because we got a new lead here, we got a new prospect, we press save and continue, right? Uh, this is my connection, right? But you know, if you don't have it connected yet, you, you click here and it's gonna open up like a pop-up screen, it's gonna make you log in. You just gotta remember the login email and the login password. Uh, but it's pretty cool because uh, it, it, you know exactly for sure where it's going. Because sometimes you see enter and connect, you don't know which uh, account or which app it connected to, right? Uh, and in fact, I'm gonna go ahead just 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 for the sake of uh, demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and just demonstrate to you. See how it does that? It gave me a username and password prompt, right? So just imagine putting your email here and the password you created. You press yes, continue, and then boom, it connects it. Okay. But you didn't have to do this because you started back in your FooBot. Um, you, you connected that way, and that's why it's already connected and you didn't have to do anything, correct? Yeah, yes, yes. But when you first log on, choose an account, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pop something up like I just showed you. It's going to pop this up. And then you're going to put... Oh. Um, yeah. Then you're gonna put, be, you're gonna, it, it popped up because you've already created a, a, a Zap then. Is that what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is whenever I started uh, the first time, right, it didn't have this here, right? Oh, okay. It had just this. So just imagine this being blank white. You have to click connect an account every time, right? Okay. It doesn't, it doesn't automatically try to do that. It, it, it prompts you to connect an account. And when you click it, it's going to pop up this window, and you just put your email and your password, and then it's going to, boom, populate this thing right here, right? And you right. know you know you're now connected. So that username and password is our FooBots. Um, L am I saying that right? Yes. Yeah. Well, you can say FooBots or FU bots. I mean, it's whatever. <laughs> I like FooBots for some reason. It's easier. But I like, anyway, I like FooBots. So too. You just use that login. Mm -hmm. So this is basically Zapier saying, "Okay, we're going to log you into your uh, FooBots, right? What is your e uh, what is your email or username, and what is your password? And you click it." It's just like when you click in, when you actually go to the CRM itself, it's gonna uh, take your credentials and confirm that that's you, connects you, so now I'm officially connected. You see? Right. So I'm gonna go ahead and save and continue, right? And now I get to uh, you know, connect the, the different uh, details, right? Or the different, uh, you know uh, what do you call it uh, characteristics of the lead right so here I'm gonna get I'm gonna select which of my accounts that I want to use I'm gonna select that one and then destination is going to be your campaign so uh, let me see here oh you know what remember how I told you that I had problems trying to uh, find my connection Remember I told you like I had 1.0.0 and for some reason it wasn't yeah. working? Yeah, that's what's happening right now. You see, that's, I mean, I have, I have like 30, 40 campaigns that's not populating. So I'm going to actually backtrack, right? And this is 1.0.0. I'm going to go ahead and connect to the other one. And I didn't want to waste time, but that's actually a good demonstration. You just saw what I went through and what I'm suggesting you should do, okay? So now you see how there's like different uh, choices. It's the mm -hmm. same thing, but for whatever reason, the connection is different. You know, maybe they, they have like two different teams working or something, I don't know. So I'm gonna go ahead and click new prospect. And you see how there's two accounts now, you see? So you cl click connect account and you can add another account if you want, right? But since I've already logged in, I'm gonna go ahead and just use the one I have, okay? And that's another thing about Zapier. These are both the same account, and they're both different. They're both using the same account, but so there should be two Zaps, 
but because I connected the account and I added it in, it went ahead and just made another quote quote connection, right? Uh, so it, it, it's confusing like that, but, and see, that's what happens. You see how that one popped up out of nowhere? Yep. Yeah, so that's what you'll see happen when you log into yours, okay? Um, now, I'm not gonna use this one, I just want to show you the demonstration of how that works, okay? I'm going to go ahead and click back uh, the one that I uh, had originally. I'm going to press save and continue. And now it's going to give me the same uh, dialogue or input box that we saw earlier, but it's going to populate all my accounts, right? So look at all my accounts. So I actually have all y'all's accounts here, okay? But this is my main account, so I'm going to click it. And destination is going to be, again, your campaign, okay? So you click here and... Let me go ahead and reload that. Why is it not showing all my campaigns? I may actually have to connect to let's see here. Where is it? I'm gonna connect to this one right here. Yeah, okay. So I just had the wrong account. So these are all the campaigns that I, I've given you. Okay, and for loan officers, I'm gonna give you both loan officer and agents. For agents, I'm only gonna give them the agent one, okay? Because, you know, compliance, I don't think the, the verbiage that a lender is saying an agent's allowed to say, whereas like some of the things that agents say, I think the lender can say, right? Um, so yeah, you have access to all these, okay? So let's say we have a new lead from Boomtown and you wanted to get a pretty aggressive follow-up the one I use is the 10 days of pain, right? Uh, so uh, let me see here. And I probably should have written this differently, but you can still read it when you click it. As you can see, it highlights it, but I wanted to describe it. And just so you know, the reason, the way I, uh, I, this, I uh, named them, I wanted to show you where it originated from, which it originated from the actual CRM, Foobots, and it says 10 day age internet leads. So 10 days, like how long the duration, the market, the campaign's gonna go. And at the end, it says 12 touch tip, a uh, drip. That means there's going to be 12 different messages, emails, texts, or voicemails that goes out within those 10 days. Okay. So I basically named it how long it's going to be, what it is, and then how many times it's going to fire out a, a message to the lead. Okay. And I put LD at the end. That's because I got this from line desk. Okay. So that's why I named it that way. Okay, so the one I'm gonna actually uh, use is gonna be my 10 days of pain. Okay, so here it is, original 10 days of pain buyer lead. That's the reason why I can find it's not named 10 days and named original. This is like my original uh, follow-up that I train everybody in my Robot Generals coaching group. So it's uh, a- Is this the one I would, I would select to, or do I not have the original? I just have the 10 day you, you, of pain you, one. You, you can have every single thing that you're seeing right now, you can have all of them. Okay. Oh, okay. So the original so do you one. Suggest the original. If you want a really aggressive follow-up system for leads, yes, that this is the one that I teach. This is the one that I build okay. for my clients who hire me to build funnels for them, right? So okay. if someone says, "Larry, I want you to build a funnel for me, and I want it to be automated follow-up system. I only want to talk to people that are that are responding." So I go, "Okay, no problem. I'm going to build you the 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 page, the funnel." and the follow-up and in my follow-up the scripting is this exact script i use it every single time right now this one's for 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 agents you see that i have one for lenders as well okay okay so let me show the lenders one lenders original it's probably up top somewhere or just there it is right there okay so this one's for lenders. so this would be for you right okay so uh when you when you uh get ready to do this i would highly suggest going into your crm and going to the campaign and reading every single one of the messages to make sure that it looks like it's supposed to be uh, and, and it's customized to you, right? So, so like, let me ask you a question then. So if I go into my campaign and I there's something I want to change a little bit in there, that's only changing it for me, correct? Or am I able to even edit it? You can, do, you can edit it, you can change it, you can delete it, you can clone it, you can do whatever you want. So let me show you real quick. Okay. I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean. So here's the campaigns. Original 10 days of pain agent. 
I'm looking for the loan officer one since that's the one that would apply to you. Here it is right here, it's the first one. So I would go to messages and I would read all of these, right? And I did my best to make it as generic as possible so that if you didn't touch it, it would still populate your information. But you see right here, this is an automated pop-up. You have to put this in yourself. You see? Okay. Yeah, so it, I do have to go in and edit all this before I set up this zap. Correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. 100%. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, it, it, and it, some people might not know that, but most of them, most of them are automatically populated without this kind of information. So you don't have to edit it. So like I would say out of the 30 or 40 that I made, uh, maybe five or 10 of them needs to be uh, edited and customized. But the rest of them will just kind of populate your first name, your middle name, I mean, your full name, your phone number, your signature, which hopefully has your company name. So for the most part, most of the campaigns are designed to be ready to go, right? Like if you just said, I don't care, I'm gonna just start it, you should be fine, right? But there's a few like this one where you have to go in and change it or this is what the, the person, the recipient is going to get, which you don't want them to get that. Okay. Um, but yeah. So this, let me ask a question. I see here you have, um, uh, you referred to me in order to get pre for mortgage by one of the best realtors in town and it has that agent name. On my boom town right now, I have two agents that are on there. Um, one gets a majority of the leads, another one um, who's, uh, she gets maybe one fourth of the leads. There's probably no way for me to be able to tell in that zap which agent it is, right? No, there'll be no way. That, that, yeah, that so would be... I just need to edit that so that it's, you know, um, so it's based on the broker and not really the agent. Yeah, I would put one for the mortgage uh, for one of the best for for the best realtors in town uh, team blah 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 blah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yep. So uh, okay, here we go. So I'm going to select the original ten days of pain. Right. This is the assumption that we've already built it up. Right. We've already edited. It, we've already customized it. It's perfect. We're ready to launch it. Right. You you may have tested it out yourself. You may have sent it to yourself, and you're like, yeah, it looks beautiful. I love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and go live with it, right? I'm gonna go ahead and throw this out to the the, the market, right? My phone is blowing up. Let me see here. Where where I just, you know, I'm just gonna search it. Original. There it is. Lender. Okay. So now, what I'm telling Zapier is I want to go to my account here. I want to use this follow up, and you can see, you can read it word for word exactly what the actual uh, campaign is, right? Like it looks exactly the same, right? So you know it's that. So, cause I mean, uh, some of them look similar. So I would double, triple check this, right? I would be like, okay, let me make sure I got the right campaign. And you know, I, I actually uh, suggest you going in there and editing editing the, the title. I only did that so that you guys, when whoever, whoever signs up can see what the campaign is for reference purposes, but you can change this all you want. You can be like 10 days of paint and just erase all this crap. You know what I'm saying? I just I, I just title them that way so that the the person who signs up for the CRM can look at the all the different campaigns and have an idea of what I I'm telling you this is right. But you can right. name it whatever you want. You can name it my favorite campaign and 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 be done with it, right? Um, so uh, so we know this is the right one, and here we go. This is the this is the easy part, right? We got a new lead from from Boomtown, right? We got the first name. We got the last name, we got the email, we got the phone number. Now this next part is the tricky part. Foobots is very simple, right? And that's one of the reasons why I love it, okay? It's like, like you cannot mess it up. I mean, you can make mistakes, but you can't mess it up, right? I mean, it's pretty intuitive. So one of the reasons why I love it is because when you go into it, it's, I mean, there's like lying desk to me is super confusing. There's all these different things, Salesforce or Jungle Same. There's so many different uh, uh, details. It's like, oh my God, it's, 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 it's uh, intimidating, right? This is very simple. It's name, email, phone number, campaign. Can you read all this? Yep. Okay, so, so yeah, name, email, phone number, campaign, the status, right? You can put reminders, you can put tags, right? You can add notes. 
and you can go back and forth and talk to people and it's very easy and you email them right away or text them right away. I mean, to me, it's, it's a no brainer, right? So one of the things that I consider for a CRM that is necessary is other details, obviously, but we don't have the luxury of having simplicity and too many details. So I put them in the notes. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. unless you have other, you know, things that you're trying to do, like maybe you want to send a, a, a birthday card or whatever, every single month, or whatever, this CRM does not do that. Okay. This CRM is literally a follow-up conversion CRM, right? It's, that's what it's designed for. It's designed to get people to wake up, to answer, and that way you can have a conversation with them and then you figure out, do they need to go into your LOS or whatever, right? Like Jungle, right? For us. So I wouldn't put mm -hmm. these people into jungle until I know that they're ready to go. Then I'll put them in the jungle, right? Because again, jungle's follow-up is uh, not as easy. So the reason, right. I'm the reason I'm telling you all this is because this part right here, this is this part right here, okay? So I'm going to, right. I'm going to add notes. So I'm going to look at all the different uh, uh, details that they got, you know, so... Um, doesn't look like there's much, right? Source name, Zapier. Uh, buyer agent, lender or seller agent, right? And Bo I guess Boomtown does not, it doesn't have a lot of details. When I use like a Jungle, there's like a thousand details, okay? Um, yeah. So again, it, the, the part of the notes could be a lot different, but check this out. I would just put source and here I will put uh, associate with, right? Okay. Now, maybe the lead will also have address. Uh, you know, maybe there's other questions. I'll give you an example. Uh, uh, lead pops is something that I work with a lot. And lead pops ask questions like, when are you moving? What is your, you know, monthly income? Uh, you know, uh, what is your credit score? Do you have a house that you need to sell? You ask those questions. And those would actually populate in Zapier. And I would actually put those in the notes. Okay. Okay. So even though the CRM that FooBots doesn't have a space for that, it still can be visible if you put it in the notes. As you can see here, I designed it so it has address, city, state, shipping address, yada, yada, yada. I even have like what it got created. I even have uh, IP address, right? And I actually give myself a note. This lead did not purchase. They were put on the campaign. FooBots leads 10 days of pain, follow up, drip, close them, right? And, you know, again, that, so that is one of the things that's missing, but I actually like that because I don't want to bog down my CRM with a bunch of extra details. I just need to know how to contact them. Boom, boom, boom. And what status are they? Are they new? Are they responded one or lost? That's all I need to know. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's how you do it. You press continue and you can test a step, right? Uh, let me see here. This is this account. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and, and then test it out, right? Send test. And I am, that's my phone ringing. You hear that? That's my phone telling me I got to lead, yeah. right? So my okay. phone just, yeah, my phone just told me that I got to lead, right? Um, and, uh, and FooBots is doing that? Yeah, FooBots told me. FooBots, this is my, this is my FooBots number, 972-736-9776. That's my FooBots okay. number, right? And so, that will happen to me as well. Well, I have, I have my campaign, the 10 days of pain on a forced call. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let me show you what that means. When you go to the campaign, right, this is, and I opted in on this one, right? Uh, actually, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm working with. Okay. Oh, let me log out here. Uh, sometimes it doesn't let me log out properly. Because you know it's like a inception. I'm on like I'm like logged into another uh, yeah. account, into another account, into another account, right? So I'm going to go along to my master account here. Okay, you see, there's a lead right there. This is the lead we just created. Yep. And you click it, you can actually see which campaign it's on, right? So I'm going to click the lead. See, there is. There's the voicemail that's gonna, uh, that it's gonna send out, right? This is, you know, uh, the message I, I, des I designed for them, right? Um, okay. And this is actually an email. See how it says email, right? Yeah. 
and you also have email, but check this out. This is my favorite part right here. Show 14 scheduled messages. So I got my 10 days of pain already queued up, ready to fire. It's going to tell me when and what it's going to be sent. So it's saying that in about uh, 10 minutes, it's going to send this message. Right? And then tomorrow is going to send this message. And then the next thing is going to send this message. You see? Yep. And if they respond, right, if that person responds, and Zapier is not going to respond because Zapier is not a real account, right? But if Zapier were to text yeah. me back, this will all get deleted. You know what I'm saying? It will no longer be queued up. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Again, this is all about a follow-up and convert into a conversation, right? That's all we want to do. We want to get these people to wake up and say, yes, I'm a, I am... I am actively looking for the information you're offering. Can I have it? Yes. Okay, boom. Fubots did his job. That person's converted. No longer communicate to them on here unless, you know, unless you want to keep them there until you know that they're serious. But I would automatically be like, okay, let's, let's you know, let's find out a little bit about you. You know, um, you know when are you planning to move? How, uh, you know, do you have any money down for down payment? Yada, yada, yada. And I'll put those people in jungle. You know what I'm saying? Um, especially right. if they made actual intentional moves they, they decide to visit you at your office or they decide to talk to the agent or whatever right and you can still maintain and and and, and manage those leads here right you can put notes you know this person actually answered the phone you know you can put answer phone phone and spoke to the agent going to meet tomorrow right you add it boom it's another note you see, and it tell and it's time stamp, uh, time stamps it, which is kind of cool, right? Um, so yeah, you can add notes, and then uh, you know, again, I would migrate them as soon as I know that they're live because they're no longer a lead. Now they're actually a, an actual like, customer. They're a client, right? Um, so yeah, that's how this whole entire system set up. And again, uh, do I have to manually um, take them out, or it it automatically does that? You, it you takes click, it out once. If, it if you put if you put one, if you put one, it puts it in uh -huh. a different category. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You got new respondent one and loss, right? You put one, it puts it in a different category. And again, the moment they respond back, there's no longer no longer communication unless you initiate it, right? Now they might initiate it with you. They might be like, uh, "Hey, I, I don't have your your phone number, but I have this number. Uh, are you getting this message? You see what I'm saying? So they might reach out to you, okay. and you'll get an you'll get an email notification when that happens. Uh, so, Great. So, and so on this, um, going back to this campaign, I, if I go through all of this, the uh, voicemail, it's easy for me to set that up and do that? Yes, very Correct? easy. Yes, very easy. Let me show you real quickly. So you go to your messages. These are the, this is the campaign. You see how I built mm -hmm. it, right? Yep. So it's an email, ring this voicemail, text, 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 email, text, text, email, text, 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 text email, text, and then a ring this voicemail, right? And I, I, I built it almost exactly how I had it in my other CRMs. I had it at Jungle at one point. I had it in Lion Desk at one point, right? Uh, I built it out in other CRMs like Boomtown, like uh, Surefire for clients. You know, they all have like their own uh, CRMs. They want you know, yeah. big people not. So I built this in, and I built it exactly the same with the same date. Now, this one doesn't get you, let you choose like uh, 815 you know uh so i had to do eight or eight thirty you know nine or nine thirty ten or ten thirty right uh but it's pretty close to and the reason why i use it because it works right i've done it for all my lead generation systems i have like over 10 funnels that are, that are firing up right now i have uh you know countless clients that are using the same exact follow system and it's working okay so that's why i keep it right um, but yeah, you go in and you can change whatever you want. Let me go to the room, this voicemail and you might not be able to hear this, but well, okay, but I get the idea. So that's cool. So what you, yeah, what you, when, whenever, and I'm, I'm going to show you, I'm going I'm to show you exactly how it works. Okay? And this is a system that it automatically goes to their voicemail, not to them answering it. Yeah. It's using slide dial. So it's a ringless voicemail. When I think you tested it out on me, I saw it pop up as unknown caller and then it automatically went to my voicemail. Yes, that's, that how, that's how it's supposed to do it, yes. So it lets the person know okay. that the call did come in, but they can't talk to you. They can't pick it up. And this is included, this is included in part of this product, is yes, using that. Yes, ma'am. Wow. Yeah. Now, cool. 
Yeah, there's, there, there's, and, and you know, there's a, a usage, like I get charged for usage, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Statistically speaking, most people are not going to go past the average usage. So I, that's why I priced it a certain way. But if you do go beyond that, then we have to have a conversation because obviously I, I can't pay you to use my CRM, right? Uh, right. Or pay, uh, so, well, so, I mean, you could. <laughs> well, I, I don't. I don't want to. My 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 wife would be really oh, okay. mad at me. <laughs> she, she she'd be really mad at me if she saw that I was actually paying someone to use my CRM, right? Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, I I designed it so that I believe, and that's why it's beta stage. I mean, I might throw everything out the door and be like, okay, you know what, you guys have to charge a hundred. You know, I don't know yet, right? Uh, what yeah. to see? But so is there? I noticed you said something in the last training. You were talking about there's like a forced call. Um, system so that you could actually um, it gives you the option of actually talking to them is yes. that that's, that's not part of this campaign no that is that is that's that's why my phone rang my phone rang it gave, oh. me, it gave me the opportunity to to call the lead if I wanted to it rang. and that's part of this yes that's part of this yes so, so you over here, you see how it says force call right here. This is the preferences. Yeah. Right? This is the campaign, right? You go to preferences, you go to phone, okay. force call. Turn on to receive a call to connect with prospect every time there's a new prospect. That is part of the food. Okay. Yes. Because um, okay. you, and I, you and I know that when it comes to lead generation, you got to answer them quick, right? You got to get in front of them. You got to, you got to, yep. you got to capture them before they end up getting dripped on or marketed to from Zillow or whatever. Because obviously if they're clicking an ad that talks about mortgages or homes, now Facebook is like, okay, well this person just clicked an ad about a home. Hey Zillow, hey, uh, you know, Rocket Mortgage, this is one of your targets. Let me go and send your ad to them as well. And all of a sudden they're clicking their ad instead of your ad and you lost them because they, they got picked up by the Rocket. You know what I'm saying? Can so, you kind of describe a little bit about what that force call looks like? I mean, when it comes to you, you kind of said it in the other um, video, but it was um, here. I'll, it was pretty quick. Actually, let me see if I can just go ahead. Uh, uh, where did I put this app, dude? Did I just lose it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and test it again, and I'm gonna let you hear the force call. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let me see here. Where's my lead? There's my lead. I'm gonna trash this lead. I'm gonna delete it. So lead no longer exists. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna retest this step. So, so you see how my phone's ringing, right? Yeah. I'm gonna put on speaker. Hey Larry, you have a new lead from the campaign call render. If you bought the original 10 days of pain buyer leads, follow up 17 touch trip. If you bought dot com, 2019. The lead name I say to your contact, press one to call it now. Calling prospect. And then it just dials it. Yep, but it hung up because that's a fake number. But yeah, it, and it dials it, right. so you can talk to them right away. And so then if you do that, it doesn't leave them a voicemail, correct? No, you actually, you actually are trying to call them. You're directly trying to call them. And then what if you don't get in touch with them? Will it then... I'm leaving the voicemail message and it doesn't leave them another one or does it, will it try and leave them another one later? No, I believe that you actually circumvented the ring this voicemail when you do that. Okay. Yes. Um, so yeah, that's what the force call is. And on the 10 days of pain, I highly recommend it. Uh, but I don't have the force call set up on all the campaigns. Okay. But for 10 days of pain, I do have it in there uh, again, because we're all about converting. We're all about getting them on the phone and connecting. I mean, to me, that one feature right there makes FooBots like one of the greatest CRMs out there because yeah, it, it's an it. It, it's like an inbound call, right? I mean, check this out. I get the I get the the option to call. I call them. They're still on my ad when I'm on the phone with them. I mean, how cool is that, right? Uh, so so yeah, that's that's basically how the the campaign set up, and that's how you build it on Zapier. And uh, that's one of the features. Now, you, you know, you asked about Ringless Voicemail. It's real easy. I'm going to show you real quick a demonstration. Re uh, you go to Voicemail, and you want to add it. You just start recording. Hey, this is Larry at Pilgrim Mortgage. Uh, thanks for reaching out. Um, I was referred to you by one of the best agents in town. Uh, just wanted to see what questions you may have. When you get a chance, please give me a call back. 
972-736-9776. Again, that's 972-736-9776. Thanks and have a great day. And there you go. It saves it automatically. Press save, done. Great. That, that's how quick you can record a voicemail. Um, Love it. So, yeah. Uh, anything else? Uh, you've given me a lot of stuff to do already, so this is wonderful. <laughs> See, uh, I, I, what I'm hoping for, Boss Lady, is that you you fall in love with it so much with all the different campaigns that you spend a lot of time building it out, and then like you're still using it, but you build it out because then because that's how I'm going to keep you a second month. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah, um, hopefully. Uh, you got some value out of that conversation. Obviously, I'm asking you for uh, permission to save this and send it to others so they can see the demonstration. I think we covered uh, some pretty cool features. Uh, and, you know, you saw uh, firsthand how it works and that it does work and it's very efficient. Um, so, yeah, anything you want to add or any questions or anything like that? No, I, this is just absolutely amazing. I'm so impressed. Larry, well, I, you are the king. Love it. I, I appreciate I that. With Larry King. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really appreciate it, uh, Boss Lady. And again, I'm very honored. I want to say, uh, you know, thank you again for the opportunity to impress you. Uh, Robots LLC and our families are very grateful. And hopefully I can keep on adding value because I plan to build this campaign, uh, all the campaigns as much as possible. I'm going to collect every single campaign I can find. I'm going to throw it in there. I'm going to test it out. Oh, let me show you one last thing before I, I stop. You get to see the uh, progress of the campaign as well. Just so you know, I don't know if you knew that, but when you go to dashboard, it shows you how many you got. It shows you when they responded, the conversion rate of the, of the campaigns. So you actually look at all your campaigns and see, see which ones are doing the best. So that's kind of a bonus. I don't even talk about this, but that's like a cool bonus uh, for having this campaign. So, so yeah. Uh, looks like I'm ready for my next appointment. <laughs> Great. Uh, well Larry, this has been awesome. Thanks so much. No, no problem, boss. Lee. Give me calling time, okay? You bet. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. And as you guys can see, uh, you know, there's lots to do with the CRM, right? Uh, but uh, it's, it's beta, right? It's brand new. There's new things that are being added every single day. You know, I mean, I discovered a few things with this demonstration. So uh, if you have any questions, if you're interested, I am giving you a free trial out. Let me know. All right. This is Larry, the robot maker, robot general. I'm out.